This is a sail bag that for a jib, like a hang on jib, so that you can leave it out on the attached to the force day, I think, and then that way I don't have to bring it in and out when I'm when I'm using it. So that would be kind of nice to have working. The problem is these zippers, you see, they're missing the teeth. But I have a, one spare zipper, I don't have two. So hopefully I can just sew this on and I can continue using this bag. So I wish I had my sale rate machine, but that's in my shop. But Graham's sewing machine is pretty good too. So that came out pretty nice. So you can see the new zipper here. And then since I cut the zipper, I just sew some webbing over the top so it doesn't cut and the zipper pull doesn't come off. And I have a second one, but this has two broken zippers also. So I just don't have enough zippers in stock. And I don't know if you can buy these big zippers anywhere locally. I usually just order them online, a number 10, I believe. Today, I'm going to start fixing my mural and we'll make it better and add more fish and SpongeBob too. It's looking pretty close to the right color. We'll just go with that. We'll kind of blend it together. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little darker, but like since it's the bottom of the ocean, I guess it gets darker and then it gets lighter as it gets higher, so that's fine. So I, was, I wasn't only going to do the bottom, but it was kind of hard to blend in, so I just did the whole thing. And I started roughing out my fish, and I added Spongebob and a few more things than the previous one. So I think it'll be pretty cool. I feel like it's going to take forever to paint in all these fish, though. Yeah, not too bad. We got a new electric bike. I'm super stoked about this. I lost my other one in the hurricane. These are so nice to have. It's a Hey Bike Ranger and it folds, which I think is gonna be even more useful. So I got the bike all set up. It was really easy. I really like that this one has the battery where it just goes in and out behind the seat here. So that's pretty nice. Also the folding, it's gonna be really nice because I'm gonna take it up to go pick up a rental car. It's like 19 miles away. So that should be a good range test. And I can just fold it up and stick it in the back. It came with a rack and some fenders and lights, which is always nice. Uh, the pedals also fold up too. So that makes it a little nicer. It came with a water bottle holder. And again, the front fender and then a light up here. And the light's nice and low here so I can put a basket. I'm gonna put a nice big basket on the front there. I get groceries. I put my own phone holder on there. It's got the normal e-bike stuff. Turn it on there. And then uh, this one goes about, uh, I got it for 26 miles an hour. Horn, lights, pedal assist modes. The, the, the kind of gear shifting and stuff has seems like kind of lower end, but it's okay. It has a little bit of front suspension and the back, no suspension, just a little bouncy seat posting. Yeah, I do like that it's a step through. It makes it easy to get it on and off. It's kind of big though. I don't think it's, I think it's gonna be too big to put on the boat. It's big and heavy. I need to go pick up a rental car so I can get back to Titusville. So I'm gonna take this thing and then put it in the uh, trunk on the way back. We <laughs> made it to the car rental spot. Uh, 19 miles and only one bar of battery left. So that worked out perfect. I do like that they put this little kickstand for when it's folded so it doesn't sit on the chain ring. The other one, it just, the chain ring just broke off when it would be folded up. Now we're heading four and a half hours back to Titusville. You can see there's still a lot of destruction visible on the island. And a couple of restaurants have opened. Today there's a, a cold front moving in and it's going to bring some good wind. So I'm meeting up with my new friend uh, Tino 
he's got a, a windsurfing school, and we're gonna we're gonna do some windsurfing. And I got I got all my sails. He's gonna help me uh, organize all my gear too, and figure out what what what's good and what's not, and how to how to dial it in. Because right now I just throw a, any sail on any mast and uh, just go for it. But I think I could get a little bit better with the, the sail tuning. All right, there we are. What's the name of this place? Lemma windsurfing. We're near uh, Cape Canaveral. So we're going through all my sails and getting everything sorted out. So we had a good day, uh, a windsurfing lesson with my new friend uh, Tino. How, how was the surfing today? It was great. It was really blowing, you know, 15 to 25, gusty. Yeah, I was getting pulled. You know, my friend Sam in here was like booking it in there, doing an awesome job. Wish I could have taken some video. You yeah. did awesome out there. Oh, we should have, yeah, next time. You're ripping. Yeah, it was a blast. <laughs> that was the first time I got up on plane and yeah. in the foot straps. So yeah, thanks so much, it was great. Yeah, you're welcome, my pleasure. It was great. Hope to see you again in here. So we're aboard Chino's Valiant 40. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're taking a look at the Dodger now. He made this himself. And these are old windsurfer masts. And what was really interesting is the, he's like, it's got canvas here, but this is actually acrylic. So how did you get the, how do you so you're, put it in there? Basically you have this, these uh, pieces are bonded to the acrylic. Okay. And then the pieces, the, the, the soft part then gets sewn oh, okay. onto. So it's like a strip you glue yeah. on and then you yeah. can sew that in so there. So because you cannot sew right through the acrylic. Sure, yeah. And this one yeah, it's super clear. That's yeah, really nice. Yeah. It's not like wobbly or anything. Yeah. You can still take it out with a zipper. Bring it around. Everything Everything can be... Oh, and it folds up to these? And it folds up. You can bring it out here. You can bend it forward. It's also a little flexible enough to bend. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That's smart, yeah. What, it's, it's nice to really get the air flow down here. Get, yeah, it's so hot. Hard. So when it gets hot, you just pull it up here. Oh, you get little yeah, lights filter in there? Yeah. Really cool. Turn on the lights in a minute. Tino unloaded a lot of uh, sails that he was trying to get rid of on me. Uh, we have to see if these will all fit in this little boat. So I got it all in here. It's a little bit crowded though. So today I'm going to be leaving this marina, hopefully for good. The challenge would be getting out between these two boats and there's a lot of wind, really gusty wind, up to like 20, 20 25 knots even. It's, it's died off a little bit, so, uh, we still have to, but we still have to be careful. So instead of trying to just power through there, I've, I've got a line and I tied to his boat and I haven't talked to these guys that are gonna help me try to squeeze it in there. We'll mostly try to use ropes instead of the motor, since again, the motor is super, super underpowered for this boat, especially this wind. One of the main reasons you want a powerful motor isn't for like trying to go faster on a sailboat you can't really go any faster than the hull speed when you're motoring usually. It's more for like maneuvering because you need a lot of power to slow down quickly or try to jerk it around a corner. So that's what I do not have. So we're just gonna go to take the slow way. So it looks, luckily this line is long enough and we'll just slowly inch our way out. Squeezing by here. I went flawlessly. That actually worked. Just took it nice and slow. Okay, electric motor, full throttle, 90% battery. All you have to do is get around this little tree bend here with the trees, and then we'll pull up the jib. We're just gonna go into the jib only. Okay, we're at the inlet, and instead of going straight out of it, since the wind's coming from this direction, I don't wanna worry, have to worry about getting thrown into there. So I'm gonna go all the way up here, and then make my turn. So if something does happen to the motor, I can just drift out of the inlet and have some time to either raise a sail or just kind of and then plan C is always the anchor, at least in Florida. It's always shallow enough to anchor here usually. All right, straight line out here. So we'll be able to go into this bridge and then maybe the next one, but I think after that we have to have one bridge open. And I think it's just one bridge open and then we're clear 80 miles to Fort Pierce. We'll probably just sail maybe 20 miles today. See how far we get, probably won't sail into the night. We'll see though, maybe the wind's nice and I'm not too bored. I have a little tiller pilot, but I haven't, haven't got that set up yet. That would have been a good thing to do, but Probably this trip will give me motivation to set the tiller pilot up. 
before I set the sail up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna motor out until I have enough uh, room to drift and then I will clear out the lines and then I'll put the sail up and just give myself lots of time. We're actually moving along in about a knot right now, just under bare poles. I'm gonna put all these dock lines away. I think we'll make my life a lot easier. It'll start going faster and see if the sail's up. <laughs> We're doing two knots right now with no sails up yet, so. Yeah, just a chip up is the right move, I think, today. So I stuck my windsurfers down inside the boat to, to leave, but I think now the sails are up, I can put these back on the side. And I'm gonna go dig out the, the jib sail and so we can have a little, go a little faster. We're only really doing like three and a half knots right now. So I think two head sails would be better. I don't, uh, I don't really wanna mess with the main. I think it'll be easier to steer with just the head sails downwind. Got the jib all hanged on up here. Let's run our Mine's back. So I'm hoping the stay sail will kind of shield the, the wind. Uh. Cool, it's got big red stripes. Look at that. Isn't that neat? Like there you go, it's kind of weird, it's super high. I think I would, I, should, I think I think the other sail I have is bigger, I should have done that one. I guess this is a smaller sail. I couldn't get it very tight because look, the, uh, <laughs> the winch doesn't work, it just spins. So I just need to take it apart, probably change the springs or, the paw, or clean off the paws. Be interesting. I think once I go on the bridge, I can bear off and have both the sails, one on each side. That would be cool. That would, it might steer, the, the boat might self steer. It's almost self steering right now. Like I'm not even on the tiller and we're going straight towards the bridge. It's nice not having the main up sometimes. Addison Point Bridge, this is sailing the vessel Torfisk southbound. Addison Point. Hey, could you open the bridge for me? <laughs> the wind died down just as we're going under the bridge. It's kind of being blocked by the, the two bridges here, so we went to a really slow speed. Should have enough momentum to push through. And then it's gonna be kind of wind over there. Uh oh. Wind's dying. We'll make it through though. Come on. I pulled the motor out of the water, so hopefully we get past it. Yeah, we're still going. I guess it gives a current with us. And I think that is the vehicle assembly building over there. Yeah, I think I see the NASA logo over there. It's like a massive building where they put the space shuttle on the Atlas rockets and stuff. So as much as I like the cool red stripes, I decided that this sail is a little bit bigger, I think. Yeah, it seems to overlap a little bit more. 
so I switched to that guy. Uh, I think maybe it helped us pee a little bit. But I really need to sort out this winch because <laughs> you can only pull so hard. This thing was pretty big, so it's not tight at all. So I'm coming up on a bridge here, and I gotta make a decision. I think I've made it already. If I wanna go in, stay in the ICW, or go offshore. Normally my answer is almost always go offshore, because then I could just rest and take it easy and then have the boat take care of me, but I think for this trip I'm gonna stay in the ICW because uh, it's just super windy out. I got plenty of wind in the ICW. Uh, it's, still, it's only the second time I've sailed this boat, so I don't really wanna take it offshore too far yet. We'll just see how this goes, just figure out all the quirks. It's gone pretty smooth today though, but that's because I'm you know, taking it easy. And then uh, the only thing is that I'm kind of committed, so I've got to stay in the ICW till Fort Pierce, which is I think 70 miles from here, maybe. So a couple days of sailing at least. I'm thinking I might sail overnight actually. No. But uh, if I'm gonna do that. I need to get the boat steering itself so I can make dinner and stuff. So I bought this. Uh, it's like a hand tiller pilot on eBay. It's the uh, same red one. I just need to plug it in and figure a way to hook it up to the tiller. I wish the guy had given me the uh, other end of the plug. Switch number three, I think. So I stuck one of these kind of plugs on it. These kind of things, these kind of suck in the marine environment I found, but I mean, they're cheap and easy to get, so that'll work for now. I got it plugged into the Bluetti battery, which has somehow gone up to 99%. Oh yeah, the solar is charging it. Cool. Let's keep it up for the fridge. Oh man. <laughs> that sounds worn out, but it'll work, I guess. That's a horrible sound. I guess it'll work. I'm just gonna hook it up. So the manual says, looks like we want it to be 23 and a half inches from the side and 18 along so the tiller. So that puts the uh, tiller pin there and then my little hole for the um, other part goes right there. the pin didn't come with it either so I think I'm gonna take a, uh, a screw and I'll just take my angle grinder and grind it away until it's uh okay I got a little screw there just mount this here it doesn't really snap in so hopefully that'll stay I need to see the autopilot and they say we gotta go about five degrees to the left one two three four Listen to that noise all night. We got a nice sunset. Oh, yeah, it's on. Uh, it's reversed. It must have been set up on the opposite side of a boat. So I got to look at the menu how to swap that. Okay, so I think I got that sorted. You basically turn it, turn it off, and then you hold the buttons, all three of these, and then you turn it on and click which side it's on. So starboard would be the right side. So now it's in here. It's like such a simple little project, just mine this took so many tools. Lightening up a little bit. I'm thinking about putting that mainsail up at some point. Might get a little bit more power. Yeah, I think we would now. The wind's, wind's kind of coming. 
or in our beam. Light, green, and red. Should be about the right angle. I mean, I got a white one in the back, and that's what differentiates us between a power boat is because our white one only points backwards and not 360 degrees. Well, the main is up now. I might, I think I might try switching it, adding a, putting the first, uh, setting it with the first reef point in there, seeing if it looks any better. I think that might make an improvement. I think something going on the bottom is weird, to, is maybe causing the problem. If I just have that set, it might work better. The wind has died down a bit. Now we're only doing like two knots, but I mean, it's, it's movement, you know? And at least I got the autopilot, so I'm not quite as bored. I can make some dinner while we kind of cruise down this way. It's, it's, at least it's still kind of, uh, wide and open and not too many little islands or sandbars to run into right here. The sun's gone down and stars have come up. I can actually see him with this camera. Slow down about, slowed down to about two knots, maybe a little less. But I think as we get closer, for, further out underneath the next bridge. We should get closer to the ocean and then it gets maybe windier. Cause I hope, I was hoping I could sail to like 2 a.m. and get another 30 miles in tonight. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some, some, uh, some Brussels sprouts and salmon, maybe rice too. That's Brussels sprouts and salmon really good. So I put in the uh, first reef point in the sail and oh man, it looks way better. Still, I still need to loosen up that bolt rope somehow. I think, I think I'm just gonna cut it off, you know? Cause I don't think this sail can get much worse. <laughs> and I think it'll be okay without the bolt rope. There's a bunch of dolphins. I can hear them and they splash up inside my boat. I can't really see them. So it's about 10 o'clock now and the wind has picked up, kind of like I thought it would. Now we're doing about four knots. So I kind of want to get as many miles as I can in, but I'm also getting pretty sleepy. I think, I think it maybe I can at least get under this bridge, that's two miles, and then four miles to the next bridge. Maybe I'll do that, maybe in just another hour. Go to bed at like 11, anchor about 11. Should be by bed before midnight. Coming up on the next bridge, and I've got enough energy. So I think I'll sail another three and a half miles down to the ICW. And then maybe look about anchoring on the other side of the other bridge. I want to anchor near the bridge because then I can kind of tuck in behind the land and then I'll you know, block the wind so that hopefully it won't be too, too rolly. Just noticed some, uh, there's some water coming in from through the rudder post it looks like. So I think I'm gonna have to deal with that tomorrow. It doesn't look like a terrible amount, um, but I think I do wanna, wanna, wanna seal that up. I'm keeping a better lookout than normal because I know there's so many like wrecked boats so i'm trying to stay in the channel just hoping that if there was a wrecked boat in the channel they might have moved it uh it's just still a chance it just hit a mast or something probably all right is this gonna be the last bridge of the night or am i gonna keep going 
feeling okay now. I had like a second wind. I can really anchor anywhere. Yeah, look how fast we're going. We'll keep going. Onward. It's not really that I want to keep sailing so much. I am kind of tired. I'm, I actually just don't want to take down the sails because I've got three of them to put away. All right, I just dropped the anchor and uh, it's a little rolly out here, but I think I'll be able to sleep okay. Unfortunately, whoever put the, the wires in the mast didn't put them in any conduit or do the zip tie trick because it's they're rattling around, super annoying. Here's the track of how far we made it, 40 miles, not too bad. So it is a new day. We stayed anchored in place here. Although there was a couple of wrecks right there, I'm glad I didn't drift into those. Couldn't see them last night so well. <clears throat> Plenty of wind this morning, so I'm gonna get going. And uh, I think it's 15 miles to the, to the outlet. And then we can go offshore and uh, the wind's gonna calm down. But if we go a little further offshore, we might get some wind. And then it's another 25 to Fort Pierce. So that sounds good. I've been kind of procrastinating this morning cause I don't want to pull up the anchor. It's pretty cold out this morning, but hopefully in a couple of days it'll warm up and then I can find a good spot for wind, sur wind sports, wind surfing and uh, wing foiling and, and that kind of stuff. All right, let's pull this anchor up. Anchor's up, we are underway. I can really use a whisker pole to hold that sail out. We'll be okay. Man, pulling up that anchor was brutal. It was so cold, and my hands are super raw. I fell off my skateboard the other day. I usually don't like using gloves, but man, I, I would have killed for a pair of gloves this morning. Well, hopefully we won't have this cold weather for too much longer. pretty fast. All right, four and a half knots. So I was doing a little more research and I think our mast is going to be just a little too tall to go into the, under the bridge of this next inlet. So I think we might have to stay in the ICW for longer, which is a little bit of a bummer, but it's only 25 more miles, I guess. I was hoping to go offshore and get a little bit more wind when, later when the wind lightens up this afternoon. Um, hey, more dolphins. But it is what it is. I really don't want to clip off our mast on the bottom of the bridge. I mean, the tide might be low enough. We could, we could squeak under. It says it was 35 to 37 feet or something. And that's probably about the height of our, our mast above the water. So I bungeed my chiller pod on there. So that's working pretty good. I made a new cover for my um, the compass because it's in good shape but if it doesn't have a cover it's going to get all crazed like it's already started to a little so i just need to waterproof that and that'll be pretty nice i think I'll just use masking tape i was trying to see if i could get both one sail on each side It'd be a lot easier if i had a some whisker poles i'll have to kind of see if there's any sucking boats that have whip poles all of them i guess i could use some of the windsurfing masks maybe too Sausage for lunch, onions, 
there's a lot more boats out now that the weather's warmed up a bit. Keeping you awake by these giant power boats. They're pretty ridiculous. They've only got like one person in them, they're huge. Well, the sun has come up, but the wind has pretty much died completely. We are going, we're going like less than a knot. So I'm thinking maybe I just drop the anchor somewhere around here and we we'll wait for more wind. So I just anchored by the bridge. There's uh, two other boats and I'm gonna blow up the paddleboard now. There's another Falcon heavy racket. Oh, well, just went ashore, got some groceries, went for a good long walk, and I'm back to the boat. It's still here. So, there's not really, there's, there's a little breeze today, but not much. But I figured I'd just see if I can, I can motor like a couple miles with this motor. So, I think I'll just motor to another anchorage just to kind of get a change of scenery. There's kind of construction over there, it's kind of noisy too. So, let's kind of switch it up a little bit. I don't think I'll get much, much. Uh, mileage today but just to kind of move around a little bit. So Torquito says we can go 2.8 and if, if the wind kind of gets on our beam we might, that, that, that number might go up. You can see it kind of changes. I like that feature. So we are just kind of ghosting along here. Not too bad. Maybe a knot or two. Just making a few miles today. I'm gonna try to go back in here and anchor. It's super shallow though so hopefully we don't get stuck. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I'll just keep on sailing uh, south down the coast of Florida. And hopefully I can get outside of this ICW. It's super boring sailing in the ICW. I want to get more offshore now that I've kind of tested out the boat. If anybody has a dock in, uh, where would it be next? Where's the next spot? I'm going to be Fort Pierce or uh, I'll probably be there in a couple days. And then uh, Miami or uh, or Fort Lauderdale kind of down there. If anybody has docks there, I could stay at. Let me know. My email is sailing at gmail.com. I'll see you guys next time.